Julia, can you stop by the grocery store and buy me some snacks? I'm trying to Netflix and chill, but my plans are ruined because I just found out that the mini fridge is completely empty. I specifically asked you to keep the mini fridge full, but it looks like I need to remind you again. Ethan, honey, I'm in the middle of my work. Don't you remember? Today is not the weekend. It's a working day. Oh, that's too bad. I'm really craving some potato chips. Popcorn or jerky? It would be great to pair them with beer, but a can of Coca-Cola will have to suffice. Darling, can you just go and buy them yourself? The grocery store is only three blocks away from our house, so I think it won't be much of a problem for you to get there. But I'm watching Sherlock at the moment, and he's about to get his hands on the criminal and solve the mind-boggling case. How am I gonna miss it? Sherlock is hands down one of the best mystery action TV series of all time. Seriously, you should stop working once in a while and watch it together with me. I guarantee it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, I'd love to, but I have other things to attend to, such as my job and the housework. It's not like I'm just sitting idle at home and doing nothing, you know. Come on, don't be such a complainer. Are you gonna help me buy some snacks? And coke or not? I want to help you out. I can't just leave the workplace in the middle of the day to go buy snacks and drop them off at our house. You know how far it is from my office to our house? It's not like I can just teleport there, you know? Babe, while you're already outside, I'm still inside our house tucked in my blanket with the heater on full blast. I haven't stepped outside, but I can see from the bedroom window that the wind is howling and the road is covered in a layer of frost. It looks like a terrible day to be outside. I'm sure you wouldn't be so heartless as to make your husband to go all the way to the grocery store and buy some snacks myself in this kind of weather, would you? I would appreciate it if you could be more considerate of me, Ethan. I work hard to provide for our family, and I also have to take care of all the domestic chores. If you want some snacks, please get out of bed and buy them yourself. I don't have time to run errands for you when I'm already so busy. You're such a wet blanket, Julia. What's wrong with helping your husband out? I thought it's every wife's duty to take care of their husband's wants and needs. Besides, why should I get out there just to subject myself to the freezing cold? If I go outside in this sweater and get sick, it will only make things more difficult for you. And as a caring husband, I don't want to add to your stress. Oh, Ethan, I know it's cold outside, but you're exaggerating a bit. People still go to work in this weather, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Just dress warmly and take your time. You don't understand. I'm not exposed to the cold as much as you are. You go outside to work every day, but I stay home most of the time. So how will I be able to withstand the cold like you do? Well, it can mean only one thing. It's time for you to start contributing to our family's income, don't you think? We're both adults, and we need to share the responsibility of providing for our family. I'm not saying that you have to get a full-time job, but you could start by getting a part-time job or doing some freelance work. Any amount of money would be appreciated. Not again, Julia. How many times have I told you I'm a typical home man, which means that I'd rather stay indoors and be productive on my own terms. Besides, no employers seem to understand my worth, so why should I waste my precious time with those morons. Productive? Do you consider lying in bed all day, sleeping, watching TV, or playing video games to be productive? Julia, please, you're starting to act like my mother. I do attempt to get myself a job, but it's so difficult to land a good one. If only I could find a job that allows me to work a few hours a day, where I can relax and do whatever I want without being criticized and still get a good wage. Yes, that must be it, my dream job. See, Julia, I did try to secure my employment, but it's just too difficult to find a job that actually lives up to my expectations. What kind of expectation is that? You're literally asking for a job that doesn't exist. No matter how easy a job may seem, it still requires some level of skill and effort to be done correctly. You can't just coast along and expect money to fall from heaven. That's not how life works. But seriously, what's wrong with being unemployed? It's not like I'm the only person in the world who doesn't have a job. Look at the statistics. Roughly 6 million people in the US are jobless and they're doing just fine. I mean, people can die of hunger or diseases, but have you ever seen anyone die? from joblessness. Absolutely no one. Most importantly, I'm pretty sure that these people are not being constantly nagged by their wives to get a job. What kind of logic is that? Seriously. What? If you think that what I just said isn't true, then prove the opposite. I know it may look like I'm just wasting my time when I'm lying on the couch or bed, but I'm actually using this time to recharge my batteries and come back to the job search refreshed. I promise I'll get a job soon as possible. Just give me some more time. Ethan, honey, I can sympathize with you if you just make a tiny effort effort to get back to the workforce, but clearly you don't. For the last two years, you've been spending all your time playing video games or watching TV. You don't even help me out with the housework. I'm the one who has to do all the cooking, cleaning, and grocery shopping while also working full time. I'm starting to feel like I'm carrying the weight of the entire household on my shoulders. I really need you to step up and start contributing more to our family. I told you, I have my own way of being productive, so I don't need you to tell me what to do. Just mind your own business and stop being so bossy all the 
the time. How can I mind my business when we're living together under the same roof and I have to put up with your mess every day? I'm not just talking about the domestic chores, but you can't even take care of yourself. Look, you don't even bother taking out your own trash. If I don't do anything about it, you'll just leave it there for months and let it decompose by itself and release an awful smell. You barely take a shower. You wear the same clothes over and over again until they stink so bad that you can't stand it anymore. And need I remind you about the countless times you leave your clothes crumpled in a hamper or scattered all over the bathroom floor that I have no choice but to put them away for you? Honestly, I'd appreciate it if I don't have to remind you every night to brush your teeth before bed. I can't believe that you're fault finding me. You're claiming yourself my wife, but all you ever do is just complain, complain and complain. Well, I'll be less of a complainer if you stop being so lazy all the time. Honestly, it's already three in the afternoon and you're still lazing about in bed? I even prepared breakfast for you, but I guess it's already frozen and inedible. Next time, if you plan to sleep until 3 p.m. again, please inform me in advance so we don't have to waste any more food. Then I just make John eat it. What's the big deal? Are you out of your mind? Why do you expect our little son to eat food that's already gotten stale? Goodness sake, what could I possibly do that is right? Look, I'm just gonna cut to the chase now. Are you gonna buy me some snacks or what? Seriously, all I've asked for today is that you get me some snacks and something to drink. What's so difficult about it? If you're unable to do something as simple as what I requested, then stop disturbing me so I can finish up this episode of Sherlock. What a waste of time. Ugh, why did I even think of talking to you in the first place? Julia, I just heard from Ethan yesterday. Were you nagging at him for being unemployed again? Well, I wouldn't call it a nag, mom. It's constructive criticism so that Ethan can correct his behavior and become a more responsible husband. What do you mean by become a more responsible husband? What Ethan is doing isn't enough for you? I didn't know that you're such a greedy wife. What's he doing? I don't want to say this out loud, but he practically doesn't do anything other than watch movies, playing games, or procrastinating in bed. I've asked him to help me with some things around the house, but he hasn't been very helpful. So you're suggesting that my Ethan is nothing but a slothful human being? Is that what you're trying to say? Not that I want to say anything bad about him, but it's true that he hasn't been doing anything major to support our family financially, or even just help me out with simple tasks like household chores. And why should should my beloved son have to lift one finger to do some insignificant domestic chores? You're claiming yourself his wife, but you're incapable of fulfilling your own duty as a wife. But mother, need I remind you that I also have other more important concerns, such as my work at the company? Unlike my husband, who has been staying home for the past two years, I have to go to work on a daily basis to cover every expense for my family. I am the sole provider for our family and responsible for all of our expenses. It's quite understandable that sometimes the burden of being a breadwinner is too much for me to handle. Oh, Julia, Julia, I already know that you've been dealing with some kind of hallucination for a long time. But I didn't know that it was this bad. Poor Ethan. My son dearest thought he made the right choice by marrying you. But it turned out to be the worst decision in his life. Hallucination? Mom, I honestly don't have a clue what you're talking about right now. What are you implying? You just said that you're the breadwinner of your family? That's the most hilarious joke I've ever heard. Why is it? It doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, come on. We both know that Ethan is the CEO of High revenue company. He makes roughly $1 million per year. And you? I bet your salary is somewhere around $2,000, correct? Yet you're still asserting to be the sole income producer of your family. How pathetic! and delusional. Wait, this doesn't sound right at all. Who told you all of this? Was it Ethan? Who could it be other than my sweetheart, Ethan? He's such a talented man who's able to build a successful career of his own without anyone's help. I'm so proud of my boy. He's grown a lot since the day he was just a little kid, running around the house asking about his lost teddy bear. Reflecting on the good old days with my son really brings tears of joy to my eyes. Look, I've never heard him say anything like that before. That doesn't sound like Ethan at all. By the way, if he actually is the CEO of a well-established company like you just said, then why does he never leave the house? I rarely see him set foot outside the house unless his friends call him over to watch football or play video games together. What century are you living in, Julia? We're already past the Stone Age a long time ago. Nowadays, people can sit at home and still have full control of what's going on in the workplace. Surely Ethan can use his computer to access all of the information he needs to 
run his company, regardless of his location. I know online working is not something very uncommon these days. However, it doesn't seem to me that Ethan has been working on his computer. I already told you, he either plays video games, watches TV, or sleeps until the afternoon. Yeah, you're just upset because you don't make as much money as my son Ethan. To tell the truth, a person like my son could find himself a beautiful young wife in just a snap of a finger. I still have a hard time trying to understand why he ever chose you to become his life partner. Well, if it hadn't been thanks to his wicked wife who tried to seduce my son and tie him down with a child, he would be in a much better position now. I'm sorry to break it to you, but it was Ethan's idea to have a kid in the first place. Besides, I'd be more than surprised to see who in the world wants to get married to a lazy man who doesn't take showers for weeks or is too indolent to even brush his teeth before bed. But who am I to judge anyway? What? Are you mocking my son? How dare you? My dear son doesn't deserve to spend his life with an incompetent and insolent woman like you. If you're here just to talk down to Ethan, I'll have a word with him and tell him to divorce you as soon as possible. I won't accept the fact that my son, the main provider of his family, being mistreated by his own wife. Ethan, I just came home. Where are you? I can see that our house looks much more neat and tidy today. Good job! So, you finally decided to become a more well-arranged person. What can I say other than, I'm proud of you? Me? Become a well-arranged person? In your dreams. I packed all my things and I'm moving to my mom's house. Finally, I don't have to deal with a troublesome wife anymore. Time to say goodbye to you for good. What are you talking about, Ethan? I don't quite understand. Something's wrong? Why are you moving to your mom's house all of a sudden? You didn't tell me anything about this. Yes, I'm leaving and never to return. We're divorcing, Julia. Surprise! I already signed my part of the divorce documents, so hurry up and sign yours. Divorcing? I can't believe it. But what drove you to make this decision, Ethan? Did your mom tell you to do that? You bet! Mom called me and she was so concerned for me, being constantly disturbed by you. That's why she told me to get rid of you, so that I no longer have to deal with your BS. You've been a thorn in my side for way too long, Julia. Now I can finally enjoy my freedom and live a meaningful life without having to worry about anyone bossing me around and telling me what to do. I never thought that our two-year marriage would end up like this. However, if you've already made up your mind, then I guess there's nothing I can say or do to make you reconsider your decision. But you do realize that you're living in my house, right? Where are you gonna stay from now on? Oh, don't you worry about that. My mom told me to divorce you, so of course I should move back into her house and live with her. What else could it be? Okay, I guess you have thought it all through before finally deciding to get divorced, huh? What can I say? Have fun living with your mom, then. Come on, Julia. Don't try to act tough. I know you're crumbling inside, aren't you? But it's not my fault that our marriage doesn't have a happy ending. It's only you to blame for being a complete nuisance the whole time we'd been living together. I'm being a nuisance? Goodness gracious, why don't you just look at yourself in the mirror for once and see who's more of a burden, me or you? While I have to work my butt off to provide for our family, you just laze about all day and conveniently enjoy the fruit of my hard work without so much as a thank you? Do you just consider me your housekeeper or what? Oh, please. Please, I've had enough of your boring repetitive lecture. Keep those words to yourself and get lost already. I'm just here waiting to set out a brand new life without you getting in the way. A brand new life. That sounds just great. I hope that new life is not the same as idling all day every day and wasting time on nonsensical things. Yeah, keep mocking me all you want. But you know what? Mom just told me that she's already found a perfect girl to become my new wife. Even though I just saw a couple of her pictures, I'm already so excited to actually meet this girl in person. Is that so? I'm dying to know who's the lucky girl. For the record, I feel sorry for whoever has to put up with your laziness. Your jealousy is so pathetic that it's making me feel sorry for you. Maybe not. Just so you know, I'm about to have a wonderful life alongside a beautiful young girl who has everything going on for her. And most important of all, she's definitely not a nitpicker and a whiner like you. By the way, John can stay with you. I don't want that little boy to get in the way with my newfound happiness. Do you hear me? Well then, go ahead and enjoy your new life. I'm glad that you chose to let our son stay with me. I know he'll be far happier when his irresponsible dad is not around. Don't worry. I'll sign the papers and file it with the court as quickly as possible. I guarantee that you won't see my face anymore.
Julia, are you there? Please answer me. You have to help me. I'm in serious trouble, and I don't know what to do right now. Oh, hi there, Ethan. Why come back so soon? I thought things between you and I are over. I thought so too, but it turns out to be more complicated than I expected. Hmm, what's so difficult? First of all, mom doesn't let me move into her house. She made me wait outside her house in the bitter cold for almost an hour yesterday. I don't know what to do. Julia, please help me to convince my mom to let me in. Why isn't she letting you in? What happened? I thought you told me that your mom agreed to let you move in with her. I thought so too when she advised me to divorce you. But in reality, she just assumed that I already had a house of my own and that I could take care of myself when I eventually moved out of your house. LOL what? So you just assumed that your mom would agree to let you relocate to her house after divorcing me? On the other hand, your mom told you to divorce me because she thought that you already had your own house? Seriously, who are you people to jump to conclusions so quickly? I know, I know. I didn't think it all through. At that point in time, I, I was just too excited to finally be rid of you, that I didn't consider the consequences of my actions. Well, I think I know why your mom presumed you already had a house of your own. It's because you lied to her about being the CEO of a million dollar company. Am I correct about that part? It was just under the force of circumstances. I didn't intend to lie to my own mom like that. It was her fault. She kept questioning me about my job and what I was doing for a living. She even said that I was a useless man for relying on your income and started comparing me to my own successful brother, which made me so furious that words just slipped out of my mouth. Seriously, I thought that laziness is your worst feature, but now it turns out you're also a liar? It would have been fine if you just told your mom that you already found a job, or are at least trying to find one. But no, you chose to claim yourself as a CEO of a big company, lol. Man, that's hilarious, Ethan. What was going on in your head at that moment? I seriously don't understand. Hey, stop mocking me about it. We're not divorced yet, so we're still husband and wife. Please, just hear the rest of my story, okay? Because waiting outside in the freezing cold is not the worst part of it all. Okay. What's even worse than that? I'm curious to know. Do you remember about the beautiful girl I told you that mom chose for me? As it turned out, mom took my picture and created a profile for me on a dating website. In the profile, my mom described me as a wealthy businessman who is a CEO of a multinational company about to divorce his ugly wife and is looking for a new partner to share my enormous fortune with. That girl has been blowing up my phone with messages asking me to go out with her. Not to mention hundreds of other girls are also bombarding my phone and email. What am I going to say now? Tell them that What's written in the profile is full of exaggerations and falsehoods? I don't know, Ethan. This is the mess of your own creation, and it's you who has to take care of it. Please, have mercy, and let me go back to our house again. I seriously don't have anywhere to go. Now I realize that you're the one who was being nice to me all this time. Why was I so stupid? You were the one who demanded a divorce, Ethan. You couldn't wait to get away from me and our son as far as possible. So why should I feel sorry for you? It's too late for an apology now. I've already signed the divorce papers, and you'll no longer be disturbed by me. That's what you always wanted, wasn't it? Congratulations, you finally achieved your dream. Having failed to secure a place to stay with his mother, Ethan returned to me, seeking my assistance, claiming that he had nowhere else to go. However, I had learned my lesson, and I was aware that a person like Ethan would never change. As a result, I remained adamant about proceeding with the divorce. After all, he had been so excited at the prospect of abandoning me and our child, so what was the point of keeping him around any longer? Ethan's mother had finally agreed to let him move into her house, but he was soon to discover that this was not the liberation he had hoped for. Instead, Instead, he found himself subjected to her constant mockery and abuse. She called him all sorts of names, berating him for lying to her and being jobless for all these years. She made him wake up at 5 in the morning to take care of the household chores, and he was never allowed a moment's peace. Ethan was miserable, and he longed for the days when he had been married to me. He called me every now and then, begging to come back, saying how much he missed the old days. Together, John and I are thriving. My little John is the sun that illuminates my soul, lifting my spirit and helping me to weather life storms. While it can be daunting to say farewell to my marriage and embark on a new journey, I'm aware that only by surrounding myself with those who love me can I truly live a happy and healthy life.